Hello, I am Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I want to narrate my thought process for Monster Exchanging for Valentine's Akine. So, why am I wanting to exchange for this card? Well, it's not for her red form, it's actually for her base form in green. And the reason for that is she becomes one of the absolute best rainbow subs possible in the game. And the rainbow meta is going to be taking off. It's already starting to take off with Ideal coming back during this rerun. But we know that the Illustrate Artists and the future 8-star Godfist exclusives, rainbow teams are, and the A10 recolors, eight, rainbow is just going to be back on the menu, so to speak. And Akine is going to be one of the key pieces to this team. Because if you think about it, she has amazing awakening. She has four skill boosts, three skill charges. So her 18 turn cooldown is in theory six turns if you hit all five colors. And she also has a 10 combo, seven combo, a single TPA, which will add meaningful damage because you will have to match four if you do get the artist seven by six leader. And her super awakenings are amazing. You either get any super resist cloud or tape or the four attribute awakening. And with the four attribute awakening, she will deal meaningful amounts of damage with not just her main attribute, which will easily damage cap, double cap, one and a half cap, but her sub attribute will also deal a meaningful amount of damage. And that's important because we're at a point where we have to have cards dealing huge amounts on a regular basis. So this will make her a wonderful damage stick for skill boost to help you leader swap or transform or whatever you need to do. And her active skill is actually amazing. It gives you three turns of color and damage absorption cancellation, unlocks the board, and creates all five colors plus hearts. That's a lot of value in this active skill. And in theory, with her skill charge here and the 18 turn cooldown, you do, in a sense, have potentially a six turn cooldown or a 50% uptime on absorption cancellation. Pretty wild overall, and as a leader, she's actually not a bad leader overall, assuming you had lots of dragons on your team. Like So getting leader swapped into her may not necessarily be a run ending overall, because you have 50% damage reduction, 1.8 times health if it's a dragon. So there is a chance, depending on what you run, that you may have enough dragons and you'll be perfectly fine overall. So point of the matter is, an incredibly strong rainbow sub, and I want to try and monster exchange for her. So when I'm monster exchanging for a card, you have to use Godfest exclusives, and... I like to keep at least now two of every Godfest exclusive. And the reason for that is because Gungho is giving tons of love to Godfest exclusives on a regular basis with new evolutions, split evolutions, weapon assists, etc. And you don't want to fall into a situation like Valkyrie's Seal, for instance. I think Valkyrie's Seal is one of the absolute best Godfest exclusives at this point in time because Valkyrie's Seal actually has two unbelievably powerful evolution forms red and water clearly i like it because i made both of them and they're just arguably the best in slot for their respective colored teams and even the red valkyrie seal can be used on blackbird teams if you really want it still works so point of the matter is there may come a time where these Godfest exclusives have two unbelievably strong evolutions and you want to have both of them. And the effort to swap and change between evolutions is too costly. Like for instance, Sophie Cecilia, to swap between colors, easy to do. Valkyrie Seal, not a good time. So I like to keep two of every Godfest exclusive now at this point in time. And because of that, with the current trade fodder I have, I actually have to make a bit of adjustments. So I know I have three Madu hats. Why do I have three Madu hats? Who knows? But I can get rid of one of those hats now. And in addition to that, I also am missing a fourth trade option. So I was going to utilize one of my special event appreciation medals. Because if I have Fagin Rai, I have three weapon assists and all, well, not three evolution forms. Red, uh, the water, and dark form are just a pain to get. So I don't want to, like, you know, get rid of that. And then the basic weapon assist. It's still reasonably strong. I guess I can make some arguments that maybe it's not necessary anymore with the Diamond Rem Draw, but, you know, it's one more team HP compared to Diamond Rem Draw, so maybe that's important. Point of the matter is, it's still a decently strong weapon assist. I already have it. I don't think I want to get rid of it. For Zera Core, I already have only two of them. And like I said, I want to keep two of everything. So I don't believe this series is going to get more love in the future. And even if it does get more love, I am able to, you know, just change these evolutions around because I still have at least two copies of it. So I feel like it's a perfectly safe trade to actually do so. So I'm going to double, double, double check to make sure that 
they actually use the fodder there? Yes, they do. So I'm just going to trade for one of them. And because I like dragons more, I'm going to pick Zeracor. I know they're both dragons, but Zeracor is a cooler dragon. So this will give me an extra copy. Now I won't go below three of everything. So we are going to go now Monster Exchange, and I will... Whoops, not you. So I have a Zeracor there. I have enough Inas that I can get rid of it, because I have three Inas. So I'll get rid of that. I have three Celicas, so I'm going to get rid of this one. So again, that's perfectly acceptable for my process. I have three Klauses, so don't need to keep all three. Get that away. And then Medu's hat is not the right evolution. So that's awkward. Madu. Which is the one unfavorited. Unevolve. Bam. I wish they would let you trade every single evolution form. It just like would be so much easier to, you know, actually make this process. Alrighty, so got my fifth trade fodder. Wait, does Madu have to be in the base base form? Oh, come off it. Oh, this is such a tedious process that did not actually need to exist. So yeah, I like to keep at least two of every Godfest exclusive because I don't want to run into a Valkyrie Seal situation where I don't have enough to make all the goodies. Alrighty. There we go. So, I don't dip below two, and Monster Exchange for her, Akine, I think, is more worthwhile than trying to roll for her. If I were to roll for her, it's a 1% chance at five stones per roll. Maybe I'll get lucky, you know? It's always a chance I might get lucky, but at the same time, I can roll the 20 Magic Stones Super God Fest, and with five rolls or 100 Magic Stones, I'm guaranteed to get her. Would I get her in 100 Magic Stones? It's hard to say. 1% chance is not looking so great. And at the same time, for events that you only can roll and you can't monster exchange for, those are the ones you probably want to roll in by comparison. If I can trade for this, I'd rather trade because there's so much junk in Valentine's that most of the rolls are going to make me sad. But on the flip side, Illusory Artist event... I can't get those cards without rolling, so I have to roll for them. So I will need to spend hundreds of stones there, potentially. And that's where I would rather spend my stones and the 20 Magic Stone Super God Fest in the future. So with that being said, I now am the proud owner of Valentine's Akine. I can start playing with rainbow-style teams in the future. I have a pretty cool time overall. So... With that being said, hopefully all you lovely ladies and gentlemen out there in the audience found this video helpful. If these types of videos are helpful, please let me know in the comments down below because I will continue to narrate and orate my thought process when monster exchanging for cards because these are, you know, pretty big events, so to speak. Like, I don't get to trade that often, so when I do, I want to make it count. And I've got an amazingly strong sub for Rainbow Teams. It's going to be hard to power creep this card for Rainbow Teams unless, for some reason... The team does not utilize dragon attacker types. Maybe it's a type restricted team, but it's a far stretch, I think, overall. Like So long-term prognosis, I feel like it's a, a good, safe bet to have. So with that being said, hopefully you all have a truly fantastic day. I wish you all the best luck in your own pad adventures, and happy puzzling.